Ah. Uh, uh, finally, we have Sumin Hum, who is a London-based design designer. <clears throat> excuse me, focusing on design research and practice. Her work tackles the issues inherent in the contemporary computational paradigm in architecture across multiple scales and perspectives. Formerly a senior designer at Zaha Hadid Architects, Sumin now runs her own studio, which is currently focused on using AR and VR to execute complex digital form. She teaches at the Bartlett and directs the AA visiting schools in Beijing and Seoul. Please welcome Sumin Hong. So I'm not a contributor of this AD issue. I'm from probably from Gio's opinion. I'm not a discreet person. So I, it seemed like um, they wanted, Casey said, we want to fight. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my, uh, from my perspective, how I view this discreet. So I would uh, talk a little bit about the aesthetics of discreet architecture today. So starting from Jill's uh, digital curve, discrete architecture is a way of understanding complex forms as accumulation of generic parts. This allows parts, this allows parts to be assembled into complex holes through automation, and design processes can be digitized. This is a natural critique to our predecessors because although these projects present uh, ad advancements in geometries, their uh, construction principle remains old school. Normally it requires highly expensive calculations for rationalization again, uh, against uh, current economic and political situation. Of course, there has been a lot of researchers trying to overcome this problem by reproducing complex geometries with more meaningful and economic processes. However, many of these studies have been using parametric approaches where local elements are highly relational to the global shape. As a result, it requires precise machines to prefabricate all these different elements. The introduction of multi-agent system seems to be the solution to this, allowed by the introduction of object-oriented programming. This allowed us to reinterpret complex geometries as accumulation of self-similar elements, namely agents, which here I will argue as discrete. Works shown here are good examples of the use of multi-agent system using simple elements to create global complexity. Inheriting this idea in this project Steampunk Pavilion, designed by myself, Igor, Guel, and Cam, we use the same design process. The pavilion is made out of steam bent timber stripes, which themselves do not have a precise relationship to the global shape. Each stripes were uh, assembled by standardized three meter long segments. So this project follows this diagram. Both these diagrams are fundamentally different from Greg Lin's diagram as they all understand global shapes as collection of self-similar local parts, so in a way they are all discrete. But their differences at the same time offered very different opportunities, and they nurtured different research directions in terms of productions and design. While left diagram nurture researches on automation in construction, diagram on the right nurture re research on the uh, reintroduction of human labor in construction and so on. And as an example of the right, in this pavilion we produced each timber stripes with the aid of augmented reality following the holographic templates. And subsequently, the pavilion itself is also assembled on site, also using the same technique. So this is on site. We were looking at this uh, holographic template to assemble.
So the pavilion celebrates the short production chain between raw material to the final product by using algorithmic design process and augmented reality technique. Shortening of production chain is indeed a general benefit of using discrete process. Our pavilion was curvy for a reason, due to the choice of material and making process. Fuzziness of the design, design language absorbed any imprecision due to uncontrollable material behavior and nature of handcraft process. Through such material organization, we blur the lines between different architectural elements, i.e. roof, column, wall. And yes, it, is, appears, uh, it does appear continuous, but fundamentally it is created out of generic discrete elements which could be assigned to any position within the whole. So is this pavilion discrete? My answer is yes. So, if we, remain ourselves, uh, if we remind ourselves about how Patrick Schumacher's parametricism can be easily misunderstood due to its formalist approach, when we do a simple Google search, similar formal group appears. And what happens if we do a similar search for discrete architecture? Whether we like it or not, discrete architecture is discussed in terms of its aesthetics. And looking at the sex, uh, selection of the projects in this AD issue, it is very much promoted in that matter. Uh, but obviously, discreteness is an op operational method, which is more than about automation of boxes. And moreover, there are processes and materials which yield non-straight elements or even behaves better in curved condition. Does discrete architecture exclusive to these opportunities? So here is my final question to the panels for today. Why so straight? Should discrete architecture equals to boxes and sticks? Thank you very much. Thank you, Sumin, whom I should mention is joining SciArc as a member of our design faculty here, and we are so happy to have you as part of our faculty. Um, if everyone can come up, uh, let's get this panel started.